Hi everybody! Today I wanted to talk to you about how to write a background or relevance of research portion of a lab report. It goes near the top right underneath the abstract and um, what we're going to cover in the video is why this part is included and what to include in it and we'll also do some examples. Okay, so first of all let's talk about why. Why do we include this part in the lab report? Well, we use it to introduce any vocabulary or science concepts that are going to be uh, talked about during the experiment. And this is going to help to prepare the reader to be able to understand um, what you're going to be writing later in the lab report. Sometimes kids are like, but I'm giving it to you and you know this concepts. It doesn't matter. Part of if, if you're worried about, well, your teacher already knows this, you're, you're trying to demonstrate to your teacher that you know these concepts, okay? So what to include? At least three to four sentences, but that's going to depend on the teacher, so you should definitely ask your teacher if you are unsure. Like always, we avoid personal pronouns, and this should be written as a paragraph. All right, so if this was your experimental question, it depends a little bit on what age you are. So if you are a middle school student, you're probably going to be talking about friction and mass in this paragraph. If you're an older student, perhaps a physics student, kind of depends what you've been studying in class, but some possible concepts could be maybe coefficient of friction, F equals MA, acceleration, distance. Uh, if you're unsure, just think about what you've been studying in class recently before you started on this experiment. And that'll give you a clue as to the content to include. Now here's another example. The question was, how does the shape of a piece of clay affect its ability to float? So we want to talk about density, volume, and mass. You will notice that my paragraph is about seven sentences long. And the first three sentences or so, about this much, that's really the bare minimum that I would expect a kid to include. And it just shows that they like know the basic vocab. To really show your teacher that you understand, then you give examples and you talk about like, well, what it would mean if the number was this, and what would it mean if the density number was that. You're really showing a deeper level of understanding. Okay? And since we often write this paragraph before you've uh, collected your data and analyzed your data, it's going to prepare you, if you've already been thinking deeply about the concepts, it's going to prepare you to write a really good conclusion. How does the amount of light penetrating water change with depth? So it depends, again, which class you're in. If you are in a physics class and you're asked a question like this, then you're going to talk about physics concepts that you've been studying in class. So maybe reflection and refraction of light, wavelength, um, and then maybe relating it to the atoms and molecules within the water versus in the air. If you're in a biology class, then maybe the question is going to be really like which animals are going to live where or which organisms will live where. And so then you would talk more about photosynthet photosynthesis and about the light dependent reaction and the light independent reaction within photosynthesis and how that, you know, the organisms close to the surface are going to be more able to do those chemical reactions. Teachers, please consider subscribing. I have a lot of good resources. Sometimes you can just steal them right off the video description to do practice assignments with the concepts. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.